I like my friends in Iran. That was the best part. And of course, my family. Who? We haven't even started and I'm still like so emotional. <laughs> um, I started when I was nine. The city that I was in, in Iran called Esmahan. It's a really religious city. It was like so hard for girls. We are so worried that you cannot gonna come back home or something gonna happen to you or the government should do something to you. My Goran teacher came to the class and told me about heaven and hell. As a girl, you should not color your nails and you should not have long nails and um, God would like tear them out. And even I knew as a nine years old, I'm gonna make mistake. And I remember as a kid imagining that, that was like so scary and like terrifying. I was like, you know what? I don't wanna talk to God. I don't wanna deal with this. I just wanna live this life happily and make good decision. I said goodbye to him and I was feeling so good the next day. I was like, yay. Because of the situation in Iran, my parents decided for me to just leave the country, which was the best decision, but I didn't realize it back in the time. So I went to Cyprus, uh, which my older sister and her husband used to live there too. They were refugees at that time, so I knew how hard it is to be a refugee. And I couldn't do any study because I didn't have any visa or anything like that. I couldn't drive. Basically, you don't have any identity. It was so hard. But they had like so much peace and hope in their life. And they like, they were like, oh, we're gonna figure it out. God's gonna open the door. I was like, you guys are so relaxed. Like, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> and they were Christian and I didn't know anything about Christ. Like, I didn't even hear his name. That's totally new. And we went to church. So many people, they talk in Farsi. They're worshiping God in Farsi. They dance, they sing for God. Are you kidding? Dress nice, nails are long, colored on their nails. And I was like, wow. And I started reading Bible and I couldn't put my Bible down. He's not a mad, angry God who created me, but he's mad at me. He's not that. He created me with so much love and so much passion. He's excited about my life. He doesn't, he even create colors. He gave me the eyes to see the colors. So there is nothing wrong in coloring my nails or showing off my hair that he gave me. My sister keeps saying that God is a father. He's loving you. He's amazing. He's gonna provide for you and all of that. And I was like, if he's a father, I wanna meet that father. I wanna see what kind of father he is they had a really good father. He passed away when I was 19. And uh, Jesus himself, he deal with every single thing that I am going through. He was a refugee. He was hated and he understood me. That understanding, it was like a, such a huge thing for me. One day at the church, I was like, I'm so ready. I'm so ready to accept this. I'm so ready to welcome God to my life and I cannot wait to see his purpose for my life. Tell me about your relationship with your father. I had a really good father. He was so cute, so loving. So they made so many sacrifices and I truly appreciate him for all of that. It means a word to me if he didn't brave enough to help me to get out of the country. I probably didn't know Christ. I probably would suicide myself. I probably, I don't know what would happen to my life. And um, he knew that I'm a Christian and he was, I shared gospel with him and he loves it. <laughs> and uh, he was asking questions and I remember I was keep sharing with him. And um, hopefully I can see him one day. If you're talking to a Muslim right now, say back in but I want them to know that God is not as scary or He's not sitting far away. He's really close. He loves them so much. It doesn't matter how good they are or how bad they think they are. God loves them and He truly is a Father. 
you feel his presence and that's worth everything.